right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, it's time for some vintage with vintage being part of Eternal Weekend. That is the logical step. We also have to focus on vintage going into those important tournaments. So let's start off with the deck to beat in vintage, Blue Black Lurus. So Blue Black Lurus is this incredibly fair deck, slow and steady wins the race, chipping away with Psychic Frog, getting, you know, turn six value of Lurus, killing your creature, countering your spells, um, wasting your land. And this makes it a very good choice for people who traditionally loves like Control or Delver and other formats. Um, so we have to watch out for that, uh, or we have to learn to play it ourselves. That's kind of the, the two options we have. So pretty straightforward mana base here. Blue, black, have the basics in here, have a Surveil land, have the Wastelands, only a single Saga. Since post-restriction, that's just how the cookie crumbles. Saga is going to be a role player rather than a, you know, a main character in Vintage moving forward. That's just how it goes. Same with Vexing Bobble. Occasionally, it'll be awesome. Most of the time, you'll never see it, and sometimes you will cycle it. I tech a main deck Soul Guide Lantern to, you know, randomly hose some bizarre decks. As I said, pretty solid interaction here. Setup cards, Probe, Ancestral Brainstorm, pretty standard. The Delve spells as well. For counters, we have Seven Forces, a Daze, a Misstep, and the Pierces. Um, and then we have uh, the bread and butter of the deck, uh, meat and potatoes here, four bone masses, four psychic frogs. Those are the cards we'll be using to reduce our opponent's life total while hopefully controlling the game. A couple of good restriction cards here. Worth noting is this is not a very good demonic tutor deck, but, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. You can go get your ancestral, your cruise, or, you know, a clutch removal spell or wasteland. Um, sideboard, we try and deal with big, bad, colorless stuff like prison shops, like jewel shops. Um, we don't want to die on the draw against decks like Jewel or Doomsday or Oops All Spells, God forbid. And then I play Ley Lines. This is kind of my own um, innovation on the deck. I like Ley Lines. I don't think I'm going to miss Lurus that much against Bazaar. Um, obviously, it's something. You can't set up something like Lurus plus Bowmaster's chump blocking. Um, but this card would be incredibly impactful. Also, if we're facing a deck like Squee, Countervine, so you can actually shut down that draw engine. Soul Rend is an obvious anti-mono white card, but I also actually bring it in in the mirror. If I see my opponent playing a Lavinia deck, I'll bring it in as well. So yeah, I mean, let's see how much versatility is in that card. Then I have Soul Guide and Tabernacle, you know, supplementing Graveyard Hate and getting rid of, you know, Hollow Boys on the battlefield. And then lastly, my own tech as well. Stern Scolding is a card that is incredibly impactful in the mirror. It takes care of Frog, Bowmasters, and Lurus on the stack for a single blue mana. Um, that is especially important because <clears throat> Bowmasters uh, does not trigger on the ETB, Lurus does not bring something back immediately, so actually dealing with stuff on the stack is awesome. I thought about Spell Snare for a long time, but then I realized I could have this card that is basically Spell Snare that also takes care of Lurus. So, pretty excited to play this deck. I hope you guys are as well. Let's get to it. Alright guys, quick message here. If you want to have access to my deck guides, my strategy articles, whether you want to pitch me a sweet deck to play on the channel, um, whether you want to look into coaching, or simply just want to say thank you for the content I put out, please check out my Patreon below and become a Baron today. Now, let's get back to the games. All right, guys, let's play some Vintage. I'm keeping this hand. I don't die early, and I have some lands and some spells. Opponent with no companion. So something like a bug deck, Earth, stuff like that, maybe? Looks like a Deathrite Shaman is coming here. Okay, so some Sultai deck, probably. This is going to be a fair fight. I will say that deck is probably slightly better than mine in a fair fight, and then I'm better against the field. But that's just how it goes. Psychic Frog, a decent draw. Now I, at least I have some kind of plan. But I do think those bug decks play... Um, <laughs> some main deck removal these days, whether it's, you know, push, decay, trophy, some kind of split of those, I would imagine. You don't really want to end up with a lot of abrupt decay, but you need to kill, you know, lands. You don't, and you don't want to end up with a lot of fatal pushes when you need to kill, you know, bizarre back dead, etc. So, no land drop for my opponent here. Collector oof. Hmm, okay. I, I accept this. Okay, this is, a, this is an interesting one where if I sack my fetch land, I basically enable my opponent's death right and they miss their land drop. Is there any way I can abuse that? Let's see. Uh, Psychic Frog is a way to manage the graveyard, so let's see. If I fetch Surveil, put that Surveil into the graveyard, then I'm 
almost there. Okay, this is cool. This is actually a cool play. Uh, Psychic Frog managing uh, the opponent's death ride. So I hope this is a bad card, I guess. That is what I would call a bad card right now. So now I have two cards in the yard. Now I fetch with my Delta, third card in the yard, and then all of a sudden I can give my frog flying if my opponent tries to target my graveyard. I will fight over this, resolving the Psychic Frog if my opponent is a naughty boy here, which I assume they will be, um, one way or the other. Force of Will, pitching Force of Negation. I'm actually going to do the same here. I don't think this Force of Negation is that great. Um, hmm. What's the argument here? I have a card like Demonic Tutor to refill with Ancestral Recall. What if my opponent draws a fetch land and goes, I don't know, Oko or whatever? Also, negation counters trophy, but Mental Mist up still, still takes care of, you know, Fatal Push. I think this is the correct move. That deck simply does not have enough um, negation targets. Let's see if my opponent has double force. No double force. Well, could be still, I guess. No double force. So now, there is a chance, since Psychic Frog is, you know, relatively new vintage card, that my opponent will activate Death right here and I can fizzle it with uh, Psychic Frog. But let's see. Upkeep Vampiric Tutor. I'm actually going to say no to that. Even though my opponent might go for, you know, Ancestral Recall. But I actually doubt that a lot. Um. Oh, my opponent also has a mental misstep. Or they're trying to spell Pierce, and I actually get my mileage out of the, the frog ability here. I don't know. Let's see. I expect Deathrite to get activated here, and I also expect Psychic Frog to take care of that situation. Uh, and Pierce Tutor is, is always a weird one, because if, you, if you're relatively sure your opponent is going for uh, Ancestral Recall, you don't want to misstep it, right? But if the opponent goes for something like, I don't know, a fetch land and start casting a couple of spells, then it's for sure worth countering it. If the opponent goes for something like, I don't know, Tinker, Abrupt Decay, whatever. Okay, so my opponent resolves Vampiric Tutor here. Not my favorite thing, but I do have, if I, if I manage to get the turn here, I think that's the big one. Then I can I can draw some cards thanks to Frog and Time Walk and Demonic Tutor I guess. So let's see here. My opponent has could have Ancestral Recall in hand, which is something I have to handle. Yeah, here here comes the bad news for the opponent. So exile, exile, and exile. Flying Frog, fizzle the Death Rite ability. This is very very useful to know. I, I've never had it come up. It's mainly been a legacy thing where, you know, you can fizzle your opponent's reanimation spells, etc. But against Deathrite, it's like, you know, old school, modern times with um, scavenging use, you know, being very good against Deathrite. Hmm, opponent attacking here. What does that tell me? That tells me my opponent could have a Mox in hand. I'm actually going to take this damage. I like having, you know, Frog and Time Walk quite a lot here. Okay. Not a bad draw. Let's get in there, draw. Lantern doesn't do anything. So now, if I Time Walk, I draw cards. Yeah, let's Time Walk. I'm not going to play the Lantern. I might put it into the Frog later. My opponent has... The card they tutored for, and they tried to get one mana. So this is the when you have to remember the details of a game and kind of add the dots here. So most realistic thing is my opponent has Ancestral Recall in hand. The question is if I'm willing to bang on that and Demonic Tutor for something like Orcish Bowmasters. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, and hey, yeah, now I would have loved for that, you know, Collector Roof to not be on the table, but... That's always how it goes, I guess. Here's Wasteland. I actually have a cool play here, so I think I go for that. Um, let's Wasteland my opponent's Underground Sea. Let's play the Soul Guide Lantern, getting rid of the Underground Sea. 
okay, my opponent has seen enough here. I'm reducing my opponent to zero mana here. My graveyard is under wraps because of frog. My opponent's mana situation is is under control here because of lantern getting rid of the sea. I'm not sure what I would have demonic tutored for here, but probably a card like ancestral recall would be fine. I do think my opponent's concession is a bit too early here because if they rip a land, they can cast ancestral and kind of you know get into the game. But yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool uh, situation here. So funnily enough, against the deck like Bug, um, Stern Scolding is also good. I will say I'm incredibly low on cyborg cards against this specific matchup. Um, lots of bad cards here. I don't think I want to cut blue cards because, you know, sometimes you just counter Ancestor Recall or Oko and it's fine. Uh, Time Twister is the only one on the chopping block. Soul Guide and Bobble are quite bad. Hmm. Mindbreak Trap is like a four mana counter at some point. And Signed to Memory doesn't take care of anything. Okay, so I guess I go minus Twister, minus Bauble, plus two Sterns. And then the question is if I want second Lantern over something. Lantern being a two mana cycler which sometimes does a little bit against Deathrite Shaman. So it's not, you know, it's not utter trash, but it's not great either. Hmm. Negation is probably just a bad card. How, what's my blue count look like? I believe I have 24 to start. So let's see how many I'm at here. I'm at 24. Okay, so that's fine. All right, let's submit. Up a game versus Sultai. We're playing... Blue, black, Luris. My opponent is not on Luris. Sometimes the Sulti decks have Luris. I just assume when they don't, it's a matter of um, Oko. But yeah, who knows? Keeping seven here. I have a couple of frogs. I have a misstep for the death rate. And I'll have to crack this bubble right away because of Collector Roof. Collector Roof is a weird card because on paper it actually... did. Disrupt something. Um, I'm not going to miss up here. But it's just a 2-2, right? And if I have a, a decent mana... What's going on here? If I have a decent de mana development, it doesn't do anything, so... Not sure what's going on here. My opponent keeps a... Ooh, what a draw. My opponent keeps a 7 without a land here. So, okay, so realistically, which 7s can you keep without a land? It's probably something to do with Ancestral Recall. Because if you just have, like, you know, double force, we're not playing against... He's, my opponent's not playing against a traditional combo deck or anything, so... I will say that... Yeah, it must be something with Ancestral Recall, which is very strong now that I have Mental Misstep. Of course, the Mark Sapphire is an amazing draw, and I think it's worth it for me to go Basic Swamp here... There is some world where my opponent is slow rolling a couple of wastelands. I don't think that world is impossible to imagine. So, Mox Sapphire, I'm not going to say the best draw in my deck, but very, very strong. Beluda Delta can get Swamp, and then all of a sudden my mana is rock solid. I have double backup here for the frog. I'm going to crack this bubble right away, get an extra card to work with, and know what my opponent's drawing, so... Oh, was that a Force of Will? Yeah, okay, so my opponent's drawing a Force of Will, which is annoying, but my opponent... That's not a land. That's basically the thing. Force of Will is not a land. Um, that's the big one. I don't draw a blue card, which is, you know, that's all right. Okay, interesting. Mox Emerald. Slow rolling Mox Emerald. Yeah, th th this has Ancestral Recall written all over it. Okay, I don't know what's going on now. My opponent on purpose did not play a land last turn. Okay. And here comes Abrupt Decay. Okay, not much to do about that card. So what's the reason for doing that? Once they saw that I didn't have a Wasteland, slow rolling there doesn't make much sense, but... Who knows? Blue card is a good draw. I'm playing this. I know I can get dazed, but I don't think they will be playing more than one daze. Um, I really want to prioritize getting my tap land in there. I'm going to force a force here, just like last time. It's a good rule of thumb. If your opponent's willing to force, chances are you should as well. 
resolve the frog, surveil a little bit, try and draw an actual card next turn. Yeah, this is a good one. Okay. And when I say good one, I mean this is a this is an interesting one because if my frog gets killed, that force of will is not that great. If I have to misstep, that force of will is not that great. I will say that with me having, you know, Lurus down the pipe, I think this is a reasonable card to keep. But that's also because I'm working under the assumption that this frog is going to stick. But maybe that was my first mistake. Maybe you're just supposed to, you know, never expect your psychic frog to stick. Because if it does, you're probably going to be fine. Let's see. if it... Yeah, okay. Well, that is a fixed misstep. So I just assume my opponent also has a um, bell pierce. Otherwise, this play doesn't make much sense. And then we're kind of grinding here. Okay. Okay, so my opponent basically realized that card is going to get misstepped no matter what, so I might as well, you know, take two life out of my opponent, which is reasonable. Now I have to think about Orkish Bowmasters a little bit. No Bowmaster, bad draw. So now I can put Lurus to hand. I can play out a land. And my opponent, yeah, what's in my opponent's hand right now? Hmm. I mean, the Vampiric Tutor from before is a possibility. It's not a removal spell. You don't let your opponent connect with Frog. Um. Okay. Unclear. My opponent could have, you know, pinged for one more and grown the token. Unclear about the timing here. But that said, Orkish Bowmasters is kind of annoying in this spot. So my dream draw is a blue card so I can go Lurus Replay Frog. Demonic Tutor, that's a good one. So now my opponent can... Hmm, probably just Ancestral Recall. It looks like a simple fatal push is not going to cut it. I like, I like this. Ancestral Recall resolving. Wasteland is a good one, so now I can't go Lurus and Frog. But maybe my opponent needs that mana more than I do. I don't know, let's see about this. No attacks. This also says something. So this is an interesting one where the opponent could just wasteland me now and nothing would, you know, and I couldn't do anything about it. Okay, that frog is a good draw. So now what I'm basically saying is now I'm incentivized to play that Lurus and play frog out of the graveyard right now, which I think I should do now that I have the chance on my main face. Um, is there any loam wasteland that I should worry about in Incredibly long term here. Unclear. But I also don't think this cost me a mu uh, that much, so let's try. One, two, three, cat. Pairing the Force of Will was huge here, by the way. Play Frog out of the graveyard. Attack. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, this is fine. I mean, forcing the chump there is reasonable from, uh, both, from both perspectives. That Bowmasters is a bit annoying, though. That can definitely throw a wrench in the plan. I can't just, you know, grind away with, you know, Mishra's Bauble or whatever. Let's see what this is, why my opponent needed the four mana. Hard cast Leyline of the Void. Do I care about that card? I really don't think so. I think I'm winning handily. Let me put it that way. I'm ahead here. So now when I connect, double connect with the frogs, my opponent will um, double trigger Bowmasters and can kill the Lurus. How do I feel about that? Is that a situation where I'm only supposed to attack with Lurus and one frog? This is actually a situation I haven't had come up before. That's kind of cool. Um, okay, my opponent... I put not seen enough here. I'm trying to analyze the situation. Um, if I attack with both frogs, my opponent takes the damage. I draw two cards, but they kill off Lurus. It's probably not the end of the world. Gained some life there. Um, 
what I can do is... Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm winning this game, but it's not like by an amazing amount. But who knows? Very, very unique situation. I really love the frog death ride coming up already in game one. And here I just feel like my opponent knew I had Luris and Frog out of the yard available. But they decided to bridge into hardcast Leyline, which is questionable, I'll say. Because um, these boys don't care too much about it, and they will just win. And whenever I find a fatal push, the game is just straight up over. But yeah, who knows? All right, off to a great start. Let's keep it rolling. All right, here we are for round two. I'm playing blue-black Luris, and I'm on the draw with this hand. What can we say about this? My opponent's showing no companion, which is basically saying I'm most likely playing against Mono White, Dredge, or Jewel. That's like the most obvious. Of course, we have stuff like Oath, Doomsday, Doomsday, and the Sultai deck we just played against. I guess Prison Shops is on that calendar. So if I knew I was forcing a good play turn one, this was awesome. Because then the one-two punch of, you know, forcing down to four, uh, five cards, drawing up to six, strip mining your opponent, that will kind of give you time to find that blue source, which will get me into the game. So, is that good enough? I'm going to try this for science and, uh, and hope that comes to fruition. We can get owned by a lot of stuff, for sure. Um, on top of that list is never seeing, never seeing a blue source, but, you know, let's see. Ooh, something like Vexing Bobble. Yeah, th this has Vexing Bobble written all over it. Um, is that a read I'm willing to go for after seeing Black Lotus cast? No, I don't think so. I don't, I, it's a restricted card now, so yeah. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so strong. That is so strong against my hand. I didn't, ha I didn't have it in me. Every the writings were on the wall here, but... It's a restricted card. It could just be, you know, full ring, mana vault, voltage key, whatever. And then I wanted to wait for a big spell. That's kind of why I kept the hand. So let's force that card pitching a copy of Days or Spell Pierce. Maybe Spell Pierce is an okay pitch here. Yeah, this is atrocious. Obviously, now I wish I countered the Lotus. That's how it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th th this was not a game I was I, I, I was winning with that opener, for sure. And you can argue mulliganing to six. I'm not going to be uh, in a very good shape either. Um, but usually that argument is, you know, it's easy to come up with after you've seen what happened. I think what I knew at the time, this hand was a very questionable keeper because the risk of my opponent just playing nothing was terrible. Um, and the fact that... You know, I only had a, a couple of draws to get there on the blue mana, which I didn't. My opponent's tutoring up Masticore here, which is not something I'm super impressed by. I think I just strip mine here and uh, see if we can randomly buy some time. My opponent spikes, you know, a Soul Ring or Mana Vault, and then, I don't know, we get into the game somehow. Oof, that's so good. Okay, 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 I see. Fair enough. Let's move things along here. So we're playing against Jewel, and that was not impressive. So I don't like uh, the pushes, obviously. I do like these four. Then the question is if I can do anything else, I think. One copy of Stern Scolding is acceptable, because my opponent is playing Metamorphs, and I have seven forces. I think this is my sideboard plan against the deck. Everything else is between serviceable to good. Okay, let's see if we can have a bit less of a polarized hand here where we don't have to cross our fingers that much. Okay, this is, this is kind of good. So now we can actually get into the game. How do we play this? It's very rare that you have this uh, infinite amount of... Um, jewelry in this deck. Okay, so I want to have Steel Sap up turn one. Stern Scolding is my Force Fodder. I can cast Lurus turn two, it looks like. So if I go... I can also draw three with Lauren Revealed, which is funny. Is that better? I, I, 
so my first thought was cycle or reveal for under city sewers play it have mox sapphire up then have double counter turn two i play luris replay black lotus and then i kind of have a lot of mana to, to work with um what if my lauren reveal gets forced then i think i'm still fine so it's basically how much stock i put into the the, the luris Without a bobble, I don't put too much stock into it. I mean, attacking your opponent for three every turn is strong and all. Drawing three, what's the perfect scenario? I draw something like a mana source and some other stuff. And I'm really doing it. Draw three or build for Luris. Eh, this is probably a decision that's going to make or break the game. Mm, if I get forced, my opponent only has five cards to work with. I have two mana on the battlefield. I have a counter if my opponent has the absolute nuts, and then I have another counter after that. Okay, okay. Very tough decision. Lauren revealed for Undercity Sewers is some kind of selection. What's the point of the Lauren revealed? That is like getting myself to mana, a threat, and something else. The thing is, the Lauren Reveal is right now enabling a mana source and a threat off the Lurus. This is so close. Drawing three cards, that's the dream. Hmm. Wow. So hard. I guess there's some world we get countered here, so I guess we should play this out before making our decision. Force of Will on my Black Lotus, which is something I can't do anything about, so I guess that settles it. I'm not too sure about that for my opponent's side of things, but whatever. Uh, yeah, let's go for an Under City Sewers, let's play that. That card, eh? Let's see. Yeah, I mean, that should be good. So keep that. Hold up Sabotage. If my opponent goes, you know, Ancestral Tinker or whatever, I have the negation. Stern Scolding is Force Fodder here. Very, very likely. Mana Crypt. So Mana Crypt is a card that allows my opponent to back-to-back -to -back some gas, I will say. Is that what I'm losing to? Counter here, counter there, another counter on top. Yeah, maybe. I, so this is basically, I have to say, do I think this game is going to be something where um, I want my opponent to draw mana sources and then be good, or I want my opponent to draw mana sources and then being bad? So, I mean, pretty, pretty interesting. Force negation, which happens. Huh. And super interesting, my opponent decided to force the Lotus, knowing they had Tinker coming. So now I complete another force pitch on this turn. If I get the turn back, I play Lotus, and then I have Hardcast Force up, which is obviously way better. Also worth noting right now is my opponent, if I play Lurus, they can Metamorph and then replay the Mana Crypt from the Graveyard, which is not my favorite part of the game. So let's try and play Cat. Let's play Black Lotus. Uh, Force Will was a great draw, by the way. Forgot to talk about that. Now I have Heart Cast, Negation, and Force Pitch. I think I have to sabotage a Metamorph here if it comes, but it does not come. Okay, that's pretty good for me. Nice draw. Only question is... If... I'm playing it, or this is fodder. Uh, I feel like I should play it. Life total doesn't really matter. I'll now have to counter a whole breacher, but that's okay. I, I happily will. So now, since I fought over the mana, my opponent cannot, you know, back-to-back -back threats, which is kind of cool. Adding myself a little, little bit on the back there. Luris is getting in there. Pierce is going to be good. Um, Ancient Tomb is probably going to hurt my opponent. 
Time Bolt. So the thing about Time Bolt is it's actually a mana source right now because of Tolarian Academy. So I'm actually going to spell pierce that card. My opponent taking two damage, I like a lot. Um, yeah. Now it's going to take one fewer turns to beat my opponent. Attack with Luris down to eight. I will play the land. No surveilling left. But I think it's fine. It's like one brainstorm that it's going to hurt. Grim Monolith. So what will happen now is my opponent's just going to, you know, play out the next thing and I can kind of leave Monolith tapped here. Which is pretty good for me. The one ring with mo one mana up. Uh, let's go hard cast negation. Opponents at six, and now they have to get through two hard counters, so. Mission impossible, I will say. Duel gone. Ah, uh, no, sorry. One ring gone. Academy gone. Opponents at three. Uh, let's see. One, three, four, five, one. Okay, so let's say our Lotus disappears in some magical fashion. I play out the land because the game is about to be over. If this game was going to go, you know, eight more turns, you should hold the land for sure. Um, let's see. How much mana does my opponent have? Three. Those two cards left, so nothing matters. Sure. Let's just go like this. Hard cast force with the correct mana even. And the game is over. We're going to game three, which is scary on the draw. I've just see, <laughs> seen what can happen on the draw. Um, nothing to say here. All of these cards are fine. These cards are either blue or disruptive. I guess this Vexing Bobble is not ideal. Um, do I want a random blue card over a Vexing Bobble on the draw? That's actually probably a good shout, even though this blue card is not strong or anything. It can counter a Metamorph in a pinch. Um, and it pitches to my seven forces, which some of my, you know, some of the hands I'm looking for is having four blue cards with two forces. So it, it ups the percentages there by a tiny bit. Okay. This hand is, this hand is decent. Uh, the mind break trap is kind of making it, making it good, I guess. It's not great, but it's good. My opponent can sometimes go, you know, mox workshop one ring and then laugh at the mind break trap, but oftentimes they have to go, um, has three spells to do something relevant turn one. And then I'm kind of hoping to get through to my turn, my turn one, so I have spell peers up as well. Let's see if that happens. Okay, I mean, this is not perfect for me, this start, because it's, it's unlikely that the trap is going to do anything. Hmm. Uh, let's hold up mana. We can, we can do better on the wasteland, but it was a good draw. So now I have Pierce and Mindbreak Trap up. I feel like my opponent would have developed Reina Mox if they had it. Okay. Hmm. This has a little bit of... Ooh, nice draw. This has a little bit of Hull Breacher written all over it, I believe. Hmm. How do I play Magic the Gathering? I believe it's something like Wastelanding... But I do believe I'm getting hole breached here. I'm not getting hole breached. Um, do I wasteland my opponent here? I feel like yes. Wastelanding the ancient tomb. Yeah, th this deck has more blue sources now than previously, so I think it's better. It's it's also more likely that my spell pierce is going to work now. So let's say my opponent decides to play Grim Monolith. Kill it off. So now, uh, Hullbreacher Hull is still, you know, spooking around. Problem with Hullbreacher is I'm not going to, I can't, you know, deal with it right now. My opponent decided to not cast it before. I'm actually going to cast Ancestral here. Yeah, this is a. Yeah, I don't, great play by the opponent, obviously, since they won the game doing this. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm questioning. Why didn't they play it before their turn? Not last turn. Hmm. 
Yeah, now 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 I'm now I'm just in in huge trouble. Um, let's see. Yeah, now my opponent has too much mana to work with. This is this is probably over. Hmm. This is cool. This is why Magic is a great game because I would have slammed that Hull Breacher any day of the week to put pressure on my opponent, knowing they're not going to have removal for it in the deck, knowing you can only catch so many cards with it. Right? It's like Ancestral Recall, Brainstorm, a little bit of Bobble action. And I guess on board Psychic Frog. So that logic, if I'm transferring that to my opponent, I'm I'm putting myself at a disadvantage. I'll I'll say that much. My opponent decides to force here. So obviously worked out great for the opponent, and that's why Magic is a great game, because if it was solved, you know. Oh wow, even our saga to punish me here. Manifold key resolves. Not playing into mind break trap. Sure, now I can make it 1 1, but that's not exciting at all. My opponent can make infinitely big creatures and it's over. But yeah, th th this, was, this was a great game. I, I, I really like those kinds of games because it's not like the normal game where. Well, game one was, you know, game one was not fun. Game two, I had a little bit of uh, an important decision when it comes to countering the crypt or not. And then this game, I just got, you know, destroyed by, you know, r seeing the whole breacher on the wall and then applying my own logic as to why my opponent did not cast it. Well, because they don't have it, right? And then I got, I got destroyed for, uh, for disrespecting my opponent uh, and their ability to slow roll it. So pretty... Pretty cool stuff. This deck, once once you're you're so much behind here, this deck is not winning the game. That's just how it goes. Especially because these treasures are artifacts, so Yeah, yeah, yeah. My opponent's making a bit bigger creatures than me. And yeah. This is GG's. Alright. That puts me at one and one. And uh yeah, great game so far. Let's take one more before we wrap it up. All right, round three. It looks like we have a mirror on the cards. This hand is not great or anything, but it's fine. You know, it has some lands and some spells. First of negation, typically not the best card in the mirror. That's just how it goes. This light lantern would have been way better as a bauble. But it's fine. A little bit of Bowmaster action. I can play around Wasteland, build a bridge into two mana with a uncracked delta. Hopefully we can trade some cards and I can cast a Dig Through Time at some point. I like Dig Through Time. It, it's kind of a card that you just... It just rewards you for playing Magic, basically, which is something I like. Cards like, you know, Monastery Mentor, Uro, and stuff like that. It's, that's the same, same type of vibes, right? I want to cast my removal spells and my cantrips and crack my fetches and wasteland my opponent. And then, before you know it, you, you can just kind of free roll, free roll those cards. Blue Delta Pass from my opponent's side of things. Also, I will say, if you plan on winning your next Vintage Tournament, you should win more die rolls than I have today, because so much time that the difference between having Spell Pierce Pass or, you know, your opponent doing crazy things turn one, or getting, you know, getting to Wasteland your opponent with an advantage instead of Wastelanding from behind, that stuff is gonna, that stuff is gonna add up for sure. So let's see. My hand is kind of weak to Psychic Frog. Of course, Indigation was a terrible draw, but at the very least, you know, it, it makes it easy for me to pitch to the first one. Because I really don't want that dig through time to, to get away. That's kind of my what I'm playing towards right now. Let's see. Polluted Delta number two past the turn. Okay. Well, I'm not going to put too much stock into that. I think realistically I'm just going to go... Yeah, I guess let's just take the draw and then we can figure it out. Underground C I think is decent because not only is that a card that... It just makes me less weak to Wasteland in, in general. Both because it's a land and because it's something that might take the hit and enable Saga to you know be there later. Uh, yeah, I guess I just play out a Lantern. Lantern, nothing to exile. This is also an interesting matchup because we're both interested in 
killing each other's bowmasters. I'm actually just going to respond here and draw a card. So, proactive bowmaster, it's not that likely to see. But of course, a player will try at some point. Here's a brainstorm. So, maybe my opponent changed their plans there. If I pass with two mana up, that brainstorm is probably not getting cast. So, there's a little bit of bowmaster subgame going on here that I, I, I like it a lot. It's just a little bit of uh, spice added to the puzzle. Brainstorm of the fetch land, great in every format, even restricted in vintage. I like that Ponder and Preordain are both um, are both available as four offs right now. It, uh, too much stuff has just happened in the format that you you unless you're really sculpting for a combo win, you can't really mess around with those cards. Ooh, my opponent's hand is so good they don't want to fetch. Uh, this 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 could be over. So. Strip mine is a cool one for me here because if my opponent had Wasteland, they would have gone for that one. So that makes it more realistic that the Saga will get there, I guess. I'm still happy to dodge Psychic Frog. And maybe I spoke too soon here. Demonic Tutor is a card I am happy to force in the gate. Putting me at four cards in the graveyard. So now, ooh, that's actually a pretty good draw. How does putting Lurus to hand developing Ursa Saga sound here? Probably pretty juicy. My opponent showed Strip Mine and not Wasteland. Tempo-wise, this is great. When you're developing your Saga, you're not, you know, your mana is not locked up for that turn, and then tapping out is great. Okay, my opponent found a, a second Wasteland. That's annoying. There's Orkish Bowmaster. Unclear why my opponent wants to play that card out now. And uh, Saga will get wasted, sure. So now, Mental Misstep the draw. I feel like I just... Kill my opponent's Bowmaster, play around days. Play around days, then Wasteland my opponent. I think I like that. Or so will. Which is, you know, that's acceptable in this situation. Um, yeah, let's Wasteland anyway. Even though I'm kind of soft to the next Wasteland, and maybe that Wasteland was better off as a colorless source, but I also can't afford... Oh, wow. Caracas, that's an amazing card right now. I also can't afford sitting here doing nothing. Hmm. I think I... Now, yeah, now, now because of Caracas, Luris doesn't do a whole lot. I think I'm going to upkeep this dig through time. Getting rid of everything except Bowmaster, I guess? If I get pierced, I can misstep. I did not. Uh, okay, so what kind of hand is my opponent working with if the stick through time resolves? Could be negation, could be pushes, could be another land. Something in that realm. Um, I guess I take fatal push and strip mine. Strip mine's pretty big here. Um, do I push that Bowmaster? I don't think I do. This could be a long one. Also worth noting, I will enable Revolt on the side of my opponent with this strip, but I have I have mental misstep, so I think it's fine. Opponent passing the turn. The thing is, my opponent has no more colored sources if they're straight blue-black. If I take the Underground Sea, I think if I get, like, the Lurus Bowmaster going, I'm winning this game. Under City Sewers is a decent one. So, let's kill the Caracas. 
Change phase, my opponent floats mana. I end up getting punished by Dace here, but I think I have to do this. Play Lurus. Don't daze me, bro. Hope to get pushed. Trade with a misstep. No fatal push. Huh. So now I really don't know what's in my opponent's hand. Of course, could be freshly drawn. Psychic Frog could be... Okay, white stuff. Okay, I see. So the... The strip mine w was even better than first anticipated because... Oh, crap. Okay. The strip mine was even better because the floated white mana wasn't useful to my opponent. Okay, so... Now we're facing this conundrum. Nice draw. Don't want that card. Slave Frog. So now I can kind of decide what to do depending on if my opponent has to third land, then I might need the push for later. If my opponent did not have the third land, I could consider killing the Bowmaster. The next turn, my opponent's going to go Lurus, so I'm looking for a way to revolt. Time walk is a good one here. Hmm, do I believe that time walking, flying in, drawing will get me to a better place? I feel like that's a reasonable gamble. Let's see here. Exile. One, two, three. Flying. So now I'm basically looking for Another Fatal Push, or a Force of Will. Bowmaster is not bad. Do I turn up the heat on my opponent here? Yes, that is to be decided. Vexing Bobble is not really a useful card. So what I could do is... I guess it is, because it's a Revolt card for later. So now Fatal Push is back on the menu. Exile... Draw. My opponent with no immediate lures value in the graveyard. Wasteland is a big one. That's super strong. Okay, so now Wasteland the Tundra. Play the bauble. Do I crack the bauble? I think. It's okay to let the bobble stay in play here. I'm doing I'm doing fine for myself. Okay, my opponent concedes here because I I keep connecting with Frog. Okay, that was a that was an interesting game. It also showed that having three different colors is not, you know, it's not a free roll. Um I like the I like these cards. That card is bad. These cards are bad. I might have to keep, you know, some negations in. Is Negation better than Soul Guide Lantern? Probably not. Soul Guide Lantern is probably, you know, half decent. Uh, so I can't actually sideboard like this. All the negations, the Twister, the Negation. I mean, I got to negate a, a Demonic Tutor that game, which is fine, but that's like the more or less the best use for that card. Twister is just unreasonable. Vexing Bobble on the draw doesn't do anything. It's just like a worse Soul Guide Lantern. Lantern at least, you know, Disrupts Lurus and Delve cards. A couple of Soul Rents for the longer games, or if the opponent has Lavinia, I guess. Um, yeah, I like the setup. I, I didn't focus a ton on the mirror during, uh, when I built my sideboard, but I think the Scoldings are. I'm hoping those guys will come up clutch. I'm pretty excited about that card. Alright, we dodged a Frog for a couple of turns there, and was able to win a longer game, despite my opponent shutting down the Lurus. Wasteland came up clutch in the two-color versus three-color pseudo-mirror. I will keep this hand. I love a lot of things about it. My opponent's on a mulligan. So with a hand like this, I can go turn one frog. I can protect with force pitch revealed and days, which is quite a lot. Some hands will not care about that, of uh, the days, rather. 
Some hands will crumble to it. So I'm going to go island first. Then I'm going to go jet. Have a mana base that doesn't care about wasteland is quite strong. My opponent lets this resolve, which could mean the one of two things. They have plow or they are desperate to find one. Pretty excited to put days to good use here. The one of days, as I talked about in the deck tech, this will either be incredible or make my opponent scared. And both of those options are, are great for me. So let's fight on through here. Opponent with two cards left. If my opponent is willing to force here, I don't think my opponent is just going to untap and plow it once more. That's just my logic anyway. Ursus Saga, past the turn. Okay, so I'm going to start connecting with Frog, but I'm facing an Ursus Saga. Let's see if we can find the Wasteland. I don't play my land drop out because I want to draw the Wasteland off the Frog. I don't, so we have some kind of game here. Frog versus Ursa Saga. I don't even know what's uh, going to happen here. Those guys seem quite scary. Oh, my opponent with... <sighs> that's so unlucky. My opponent with no third land drop here. So now, looks like I'm connecting with Frog once more. Which is quite huge. And then what's going to happen, thinking about that a little bit. Bowmasters, the draw. So now I have a few options. It's holding up Bowmasters plus Pierce. Or I guess Soul Rent plus Pierce. Let's see. My opponent floats a mana from Saga. Goes, get, goes and gets Black Lotus. Yeah, this has... Um, this has Black Lotus Lurus written all over it. And I think if they don't manage to do that, I just like my situation in general. Sure, my opponent could get something like a needle, but I'm not really too worried about that. My opponent would still need to actually contest the frog on the table. So let's see. Black Mox, that tells me my opponent did not draw a mana source. My opponent is now opening up for Orcish Bowmasters or Demonic Tutor. If this is Demonic Tutor, I'm the king of the world with my spell pierce. Huh. Yeah, the, I, f I feel like I'm not... I can't really lose this game now, but... It would also be funny if I did after saying that, because my Bowmaster takes care of my opponent's Bowmaster. My opponent did not play it with a one floating mana, because they kind of want to trap... I don't, I don't even want to call it trap the frog, but, you know. They want to ma get my list out of Orcish Bowmasters having flash. So, yeah... Uncontested Frog, no matter which, if, if you're playing Modern, Legacy, Vintage, Vintage Cube, even any Commander format, I imagine, you know, Uncontested Frog is just amazing. Also, I've been very good at drawing on-color Mox uh, for a couple of draws. Like, Turn 1 Frog is just obscenely powerful. That's like flipping the play draw, basically. So, yeah, I don't play Bowmasters. I can punish... A lot of things here. Here's our Kish Bowmasters. That card resolves. Excited to see what my opponent's going to target. Target the frog. Okay. That is one damage and a 1-1. One, one. Draw my own Bowmasters. That's, that's not bad. So, let's see. Um... No reason to get dazed here. I will kill my opponent's Orkish Bowmasters. Yeah, my opponent's not gonna my opponent's not gonna like this. Piercing a force here. That's that's gonna be the game. Yeah, my opponent figured as much. Yeah, this was just a clinic because I drew the black mox basically. Was able to daze a force of will, was able to pierce a force of will. That's just gonna be the game. So pretty pretty cool display here. I got to beat a couple of fair decks, and then I got I don't know if I played poorly. I, I got outplayed. Let me put it that way. I got outplayed by a jewel deck. And that's just going to happen sometimes. So that's definitely going to be a mental note for me that even though I would have played that whole breacher differently, my opponent decided to do something else and that caught me off guard. And that inevitably led to, you know, me losing the game. So 
Keep your eyes out for different ways of life, whether that's on or off the tables, and your life should improve for sure. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun playing today. Uh, vintage is exactly my jam. I hope you like it as well. Don't be a stranger, and I'll see you next time.